Are you ready? Volume, children, volume. Oh, well, that was a quick line. Where did it go? Volume. We've talked volume before. What is volume, by the way? We've talked volume. We said volume. We've done volume, but we're not. What does volume tell you? The volume is measured in, Zachary? It is measured in. In. Cubic. Yes. cubic units, which means how many cubes something has. How many cubes, ladies and gentlemen? Remember, it depends on how big the cube is you're talking, but for example, a cubic inch is something along this nature. One cubic inch, or you can also label it inch cube. You know, if it was a cubic foot, that's a little bigger. Cubic foot. Just you need to know, though, that you know, a cubic foot, one foot cubed. Again, remember, children. Remember, remember, if you're given this, what this really means. One cubic foot really means this. One foot times foot times foot. This little three label goes with the label, not with the one. It is one cubic foot. We just don't write all that out. We just write the exponents, one cubic foot. Because it comes from this. This little cube is one foot by one foot by one foot. And the little lesson for today is how do we find volume of volume of rectangular Prisms. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Rectangular prisms, right? That's what I'm thinking. Anytime you're asked to find volume, you then will write down what formula, by the way? By the way, this won't always be true forever, but for today, consider yourself fortunate that you're just in sixth grade because life is so much easier for sixth graders. Volume equals, anybody want to tell me what it is? Lauren? L. W. H. Length times width times height. Or height. Length times. You just multiply the three dimensions of the rectangular prism together. So let us draw a rectangular prism. Let's draw this rectangular prism. Let's make it as true to size as possible. How long do you think this is from here to here? How many inches? Give me a number of inches. What do you think that is? Take a wild guess. Riley? What? 48. No, 48 would be 4 feet. That's the height of my chalkboard. Let's be more real, huh? 24. I'll go 24 inches. 24 inches. How high do you think that is? How many inches would you say that is? Probably. If you had a guess, somebody give me a guess. Zachary? 5 inches. I think 5 inches would be more like this. So, I go three inches, just to be kind of accurate. Again, you could always write not to scale on the bottom, it really doesn't matter. But let's go with realistic today. And then what? How wide should we make this thing? Let's not go too wide. Let's go with, what do you think that is? Now this one you have to watch out because appearance is deceptive. Because you lose some stuff here. Let's say that's six inches. So if the directions told you this, find the volume, after sketching the shape, the next thing you would do is write down, Brian, and please make it look mathematical. I would use parentheses if I were you, just because it looks hard for me to do that. Volume equals length width height. Now, how do you know, is this the length, or is this the length, or is that the length? It really doesn't matter, children. Usually we call length the long side, and width the short of the side, and the height the tall. But 
since you're multiplying, it doesn't really matter. And please remember, you know, they might give you all of these dimensions here. You don't multiply by all of them. You just have to find one of each, one length, one width, one height. And as anybody could tell you, the answer to that is what? Anybody? What would be the easiest way to do that? Let's go 72 times 6. What? 442? Is that right? 36, 72 times 6. Oh, 4. 12, wait, no, yeah, 1, no, 432? Four, yeah, 432. 432, and what are they all? Inches, so it is inches cubed, or cubic inches. Where do we hear about Volume? Uh, I don't know if I have time for that. I don't know if I do it. Anything that we measure in volume? Two people? Zachary? Like a, like a box? Did you say a car engine? A car engine? A car engine. For, let's take Zachary Roth's car, for example. Zach, you know what size engine he has in the car? No, that's car. Huh? Your dad's car. Dad's car? Don't we talk about those things? Maybe. Now, let me tell you, when they talk about car engines, for example, you might have a 5-liter engine. You might not get this, but really, when they talk about the size of an engine being 5 liters, that means inside your engine, there are what's called little cylinders where little pistons go up and down. These little things go up and down in your car. They go up, they go down, they go up and down. Five liters is how much volume all of those little cylinders put together have. And if you think about how big a liter is, okay, where was that my little my little water bottle back there? That's a half a liter. So despite your car engine being like this size and this size, the part that actually does the work is no more than 10 of those bottles put together. And that's like a big engine. Most cars are only like 3.6. So more like six of these. Wait, no, wait, sorry, I can't. Six. Most car engines, the part that does the work is no bigger than this piece here. The rest of it is used for what, Chase? Why are car engines so much bigger than just the piece that does the work? Anybody, Caleb, you have to me now because I'm the guy that gives you the homework assignment. Um, because you have to contain the explosion. That you do have to contain the explosion, and you also have to. Uh. Um. Uh. Fuel. Nah, fuel is, a, fuel is a pretty small part of the whole thing. You have to contain because, yes, what happens in these things, a car engine works because this gets mixed with gasoline and you should never play with gasoline because what happens? It explodes. It explodes. Okay. It explodes. And because it explodes and your car engine is nothing but a whole bunch of explosions, okay, what do you know about explosions? Fire. Yes, and what do you know about fire? Dangerous. Why yeah. is it dangerous? Because it breaks things. Because it's hot. So you need a lot of the engine around all these things. You have water. Actually, it's antifreeze, but usually there's water running around all of the, the rest of these outside things because if there wasn't water to keep it cool, your car engine would just melt together because it gets so hot from all these explosions. That's part of it. In addition to that, to keep your car engine from melting down as well, you also have to have oil coming in here to keep all this stuff really loose and stuff so it doesn't get really hot because if you have oil, it keeps it cool as well. So you have to keep all those explosions cool because if not, then the whole car just melts and it really doesn't go very far. And then, yes, you have to have this go down here to turn a crankshaft and a camshaft and then that turn, turns into your wheels. Don't you find like these things? Educated today, Joseph, about car engines. Yes. Your lawnmower, your lawnmower probably has 
Your lawnmower engine, I know none of you drive, but probably has little cylinders that are probably no bigger than that. Okay, bigger than that. But we can talk. We should get some sort of a diagram of our interest there. Anyways, the, summing it all up there, children, the easiest thing you can do is find, find volume of rectangular prisms because it's one simple. Now, what should we do for tomorrow? Joseph, yeah. this is usually where you come in. What? The problem is two. Yes, it is. Uh, uh, yeah. The problem. What's problem? If you are the teacher, Joseph, now be don't careful. Don't cheat yourself out of doing something that's like homework wise. Yes, Joseph, because he took too long. He was going to say, I think we should do multiples of five. So if you're counting by five, what problems would you do? Even though a good number of you did not show your work. Thank you for the mercy. Thank you for the mercy.